right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the News Desk here on the Pop Culture Network. As always, I'm your host, Dirt, and today we're going to be talking about Transformers. You guys remember BotCon happened recently, and uh, there was a lot of news coming out of BotCon, some toy releases they were talking about, and you guys know that nobody here at the Pop Culture Network is a expert, you know, when it comes to Transformers. We all have our own little things that we like, and Transformers just doesn't fall on any of our radar. It's not that we hate Transformers. We hated Bayformers, and that was the big problem for us, and the movies kind of killed the toy line as far as we were concerned. But I've decided to fix the problem today. We've got a member of our forums, Deca Prime, who is going to drop an info bomb on us. He is an expert in Transformers, super knowledgeable, and uh, hopefully I haven't built you up too much now that you're nervous. But uh, uh, Not at all. Now, the internet connection has been a little flaky this morning, so the sound may kind of be a little choppy here. We're going to do our best to keep things going, though. And um, you, you, you're a big fan. How long have you been a fan of uh, Transformers? Uh, Transformers premiered about three years after I was born. So uh, from pretty much the beginning. So you've been watching it since you were three years old? Um, yeah, I'd say earliest, earliest memories would be fighting between Transformers and Thundercats. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a pretty big... Uh, Pop culture war right there. <laughs> we can start a lot of forum wars on that one. Probably. All right, now, one thing before we start talking about the toys on BotCon, I just, I'm just i curious as if you had heard about any news coming out of BotCon. Um, leading up to it, Hasbro had basically said that they didn't want any third-party stuff there. They didn't want it sold. They didn't want it shown. Um, and I'm just curious, did you hear any stories coming out of BotCon? Were, were there any... Hasbro lockdowns, anybody get into a fight, were there any Occupy Cybertron protests, anything like that going on, or did it all just pretty much go smoothly and no one really cared? Nothing really huge. There were a couple of uh, people that did show up with third-party toys that were not they were kind of glossed over. Um, there's a company called Make Toys, which is doing their own Devastator, um, slightly smaller than the, the Hercules figure that came out recently. Um, and he was seen at a couple of different booths, and there was some third-party add-on stuff that was shown in a couple different booths, and, and Hasbro didn't seem to enforce it as much as they said they were going to. Um, there are stories, supposedly, of a couple of people being whisked away to uh, hotel rooms to get a hold of some third-party, you know, quote-unquote illegal stuff that they could then take home for their buddies. But it, it didn't seem to be a real debacle, and it's kind of unusual for Hasbro now to put this huge stamp on third-party toys and say, you guys can't be there when third party's been such a big part of, of BotCon up to this point. Well, I kind of wondered, uh, as we take a look at some of these releases, I kind of wondered one of the things getting released is this Masterpiece Optimus Prime. Yes. And looking at that Masterpiece Optimus Prime, I'm one of those people that I've been looking at the Dark Side of the Moon stuff. I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, you know, not a big fan of the movie-inspired uh, figures. I love the G1 stuff because that's what I grew up on. And when I see that Masterpiece Prime... I, I want that. Uh, it looks fantastic. I really want to own that. And I wonder, a lot of these third parties focus on doing their own versions of those G1 classic Transformers, and I wonder if they're locked down trying to keep that stuff out with so they didn't uh, show anything off that was going to overshadow this new Optimus Prime. Possibly. Here's the thing is that the third party guys are staying away from the really, really big characters um, except for one third party is apparently putting out a um, quote-unquote masterpiece Megatron, which we'll see how well that goes over. Um, the masterpiece Prime is pretty much totally dependent on Japan. Um, they were doing the masterpiece Convoy, um, the MPL-1, which we know over here is the 20th anniversary Convoy, or uh, 20th anniversary Prime. And it sold like hotcakes, everybody loved it, and they were kind of releasing a new figure every year or so. Um, they've done Starscream and all the other seekers. They've done a Megatron, which we'll never see over here, unfortunately. Um, and they retired the MP01 mold. And on his packaging and in his, his bio was hints of the next figure, and it was another Optimus Prime. Hmm. And I think the idea was that they were going to make one that used some of the new engineering tactics that they'd come up with since the 10 years between MP01 and MP10, and also make him more in scale with the Masterpiece Rodimus Prime that came out recently, and something closer to the Masterpiece Grimlock, who's still a little bit small, but at least it'll be closer in scale. 
Well, let's take a look at this uh, masterpiece, Optimus Prime. When you take a look at him, of course, we when we were discussing it on It Figures, we had really no idea what the price uh, might be, and you think you've got a pretty good idea of what the price is going to be on that? He's going to be a, tr uh, tw uh, bit, uh, he's going to be a um, TRU exclusive, and the price they were batting around was between a hundred and a hundred and twenty dollars. Now this is really really good considering the price over in Japan is two hundred dollars, and that still includes everything that was in the Japanese release, which has never happened before. Um, MP01 and MP4, both you know Optimus Prime releases, um, we didn't get trailers over here in America. So to get the trailer, Spike, the energy axe, the gun, everything for 120 bones is pretty good. The only problem being is that when they released Grimlock and Rodimus, both hit uh, TRU's website first at their price point of about 60 to 70 bucks. And as soon as they sold out in store, they ratcheted the price up really, really fast. Yeah. Um, so although I think he'll hit stores initially at 120, whether he'll stay that price. Um, I have no idea whether I will ever see one here in Florida is totally up in the air. No, when they roll those out to uh, <coughs> excuse me to Toys R Us, <coughs> excuse me, they usually have those stocked pretty well, don't they? When they have the the initial push, at least you can walk in during that initial launch period and find one pretty easily. Or is it one of those things where everybody's getting there as soon as the store opens, dumping them all in their cart and running out the door? Yeah, no, I only saw one Masterpiece Grimlock ever at my Toys R Us, and it was on Black Friday the year that it came out, and I literally had to climb over a pile of moms to get to this thing. Um, and I never, ever saw one ever again. Hmm. Now, this wasn't necessarily the case with Rodimus. I walked in, and they had two of them, and I picked one up, and the next week they were full. Um, but once that stock was gone, again, never saw it. Um, unfortunately, I, I live in a... In a back hole of the universe so getting new toys is not not fun hmm. um when you look at like this optimus prime you said it's unusual that we get all the accessories they tend to uh, leave out a bunch of the stuff from the japanese release why is that honestly it, it cuts down the plastic and it cuts down the price um rodimus in japan came with this trailer so you could actually make hot rod rodimus prime and you could also do the car modes and the space winnebago mode for Rodimus and, uh, and Hot Rod, and that thing is essentially a giant piece of plastic, and it, it serves little purpose aside from making the Space Winnebago and the giant battle station, and a lot of folks that have bought it, it's in their closet, and it pushed the price way up over $200. So Hasbro will tend to either cut back on accessories or try to change something to cut the price down for American collectors because, you know, we're cheap and we don't buy stuff at, at Japanese prices unless we love Super Sentai and then we buy everything at high prices. Right. Well, because we think <laughs> of Transformers, we think of Optimus Prime as something we paid 20 bucks for in 1983. We think it should still be 20 bucks. Yeah, well, we, some of us think of it as 20 bucks our moms paid for in 1983 and well. they should pay $100 now to buy the new one. Fair enough. Come on. <laughs> All right, uh, next up here, let's take a look at the uh, San Diego Comic-Con Bruticus gift set. Mm -hmm. Now, Bruticus is a combiner. Yep. Um, he is uh, obviously Decepticon. Um, what makes this guy special? What makes him worthy of having a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive set? Well, here's the thing is there's, a, there's two possibilities. One thought is that he was in development for the Fall of Cybertron game, which is where he comes from. Um, to begin with, which would be cool, but there's a lot of folks who speculated that his creation and his, his being put out now is in retaliation for some third-party toys making these really big, well-done combiners. Uh, um, they had said during, um, what was it, not the second Transformers movie, um, that they couldn't do combiners that had robot modes and vehicle modes and limb modes because it was too much work. And then the very next month, you know, they started talking about Hercules, which was a huge devastator that has all of that. Um, so there's a possibility that Hasbro put this in the line just so they can kind of thunder nose at the third party guys. The reason he's getting a San Diego exclusive is because the San Diego version is the only one to get the actual color scheme from the game. Um, and Hasbro hates us personally, as some people <laughs> have pointed out. Um, so you'll be able to get. You'll be able to get Bruticus individually in some bizarre G2 color scheme. But if you want the actual colors from the game, you have to get him 
at San Diego. Now, why he's worthy of a San Diego exclusive, he's pretty much God mode in the game. Mm -hmm. um, once you play as a couple of the characters, you'll have opportunities to turn into and combine into Bruticus, and at that point, you lay waste to Autobots. So, it balances out Grimlock being such a beast on the Autobot end of it. Mm -hmm. How much is that going to go for, do you know? Um... They're all deluxe size figures, and deluxe are pushing twenty bucks. Um, so you figure five figures at twenty bucks a piece, somewhere around hundred dollars. Being exclusive, maybe somewhere around one hundred and twenty. Hmm. So another rather pricey release there. Yep. Now supposedly Amazon is going to get a box set of the G two color scheme ones, or you can just pick them up individually at retail when they come out in the second wave. Oh, so they'll be releasing them one at a time individually at retail. It's just if you want the set in one fell swoop, right? Where you're going to have to go online or go to the con to pick them up. Right. They're releasing um, Optimus Jazz and Soundwave in the first of the generations line of Fall of Cybertron, and then a few months later, Wave Two will have all of the Incombaticons together. All right. Well, that makes a little more sense then. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna. I'm going to put it off getting him until I see some better pictures, because every picture I see, he is horribly mistransformed. And if that's what he looks like, he looks he doesn't look good. That's not a good-looking figure. All right, next up, uh, we got some bot shots. Now, bot shots, for people who aren't paying real close attention, those are the, uh, the tiny spring-loaded ones that uh, have some different stats on their chest and kind of a paper, rock, scissors type of deal, and you smack them together, and they instantly transform... Um, they are fun little guys, and they're relatively cheap. You know, you can pick up a couple of them for, it's under 10 bucks, I think, to get one of the uh, two or three packs uh, that they have of them. But, I mean, their transformation is uh, pretty basic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You throw them at each other, and they transform on their own, which for a lot of folks sounds really horrible. But for kids, which obviously has those geared toward kids, this is really, really great. Um, my roommate's son. Um, comes over on weekends, and we play them all the time. Mm. I got Acid Storm simply because his little chest symbol has his power level on it, and it's 420, which I thought was <laughs> funny. But uh, as soon as he saw them and started playing with them, I started writing more of them because it's just, you know, we throw it down in the middle of the, the floor. He throws one at me, I throw one at him, they pop up, everyone laughs and has a good time. So. And, and the sculpts on them, to be fair, the sculpts in the robot modes do look pretty good. Um, oh, yeah, they're... They're not bad at all. Yeah, it's just that uh, they, they remind me of when uh, they got the rights to GoBots. So they made a kid-friendly Transformer line that they called GoBots that were Transformers that did the spring-loaded uh, transformation. Now they yeah. made it into a game. I don't know if because they heard about Battle Beast and just decided to uh, make a game or what the deal is there. Possible. All right, next uh, up. Oh, you get something else? I was just saying that you were talking about the moles. The great thing is that they're... The way they're done, it leads to a lot of repaints. Yeah. Um, you've obviously got all the Seekers coming out, but you've got stuff like uh, Jet Fire um, and Power Glide are all very easy repaints or very small, basic remolds of the, the Seekers. Right. So, I mean, it looks like the sky's the limit for characters they'll put out. Yeah, and it's because of their uh, shape, it's pretty easy for them to pop off certain parts and pop on other parts and kind of reuse and mix and match them that way and try to come up with some new characters. Mm -hmm. Good idea, Hasbro. Yeah. All right. Uh, now we're going to move on to the San Diego Comic-Con Rust in Peace Cliff Jumper. This is from Transformers Prime. Uh, this is basically the zombie version of uh, Cliff Jumper. He's all kind of beat up and scarred. And the way uh, you know you think of zombies as humans with the rotting flesh and the exposed organs and stuff, that's kind of how he is as a robotic uh, Transformer. The uh, cool thing about him, not only the fact that he's basically a Transformer zombie, is the fact that he comes in a package... Uh, that looks like his head in this well, kind of molded uh, plastic form. So not only uh, do you have this awesome figure, but then you can pop them out and put the packaging up on your shelf and have this giant zombie robot head sitting on your shelf. The zombie robot head is actually one of two packaging designs that they're thinking about doing. Uh, they better not... do it. Sorry, say again? I was going to say they better do it, because if this <laughs> doesn't come out at retail, someone's going to get set on fire. I, th I think, honestly, at this point, they may have decided on the, on the zombie head because everyone loved it so much. But there's a second package that looks like a CR chamber, one of the, the health regeneration chambers from Transformers Prime. Um, and that was one of their ideas. They put out the head, basically, and they're saying, hey, here's the figure, and we've got a couple of ideas for what we want to package it. And that head went over, you know, everyone was really happy about that. So I think we'll stick with it. Um, but the head's not a guarantee. 
Well, they better. They better do it, as far as I'm concerned, because that's kind of right. fun. It reminds me of um, last year, Mattel had the Swamp Thing uh, figure at San Diego Comic-Con that came in a giant Swamp Thing head. Yep. This reminded me of doing the same type of thing. Do we have any idea on price on this, though? Uh, that I didn't catch. Okay. It's a, it's a first edition release, which the first edition Prime figures were better articulated, had better transformations, were bigger figures, and they retail for about 20 bucks. So, again, you figure San Diego is not going to five or six bucks on that, so probably in around a $20 price point. Uh, they might just make it 30 you know, make it even, it's an exclusive, whatever, but still even at 30 that's a great price for yep. for something like this. All right, anything else from uh, BotCon that you think we need to cover here? Um, they showed off a couple more figures in the Generations Wave. They're going to do voyager size figures, which are the bigger figures. And the first one of that is Soundwave. Um, he's basically just a size-up version of the previous release of Soundwave from War for Cybertron. But the cool thing is that he does have the ability to contain um, quote-unquote cassettes in his chest. And what they'll do is the Legion-style figures, the little, little small figures, is how they'll release the cassettes. So you'll get Laser Beak in the box, but if you want Rumble, Ravage, and, and all the rest of them, you can buy those individually. Um, and they also showed off an Insecticon for the third wave, um, Kickback, which looks an awful lot like its G1 self, but more kind of thrown into the game's universe, if you will. It looks really cool. So what is this sound wave transform into? A car. So he's a car that you put cassettes into? Yes, which made just as much sense when he was originally released for War for Cybertron. <laughs> um, several people attempted to create a boombox mode for that particular mold, and it never really went anywhere. If you play through War for Cybertron, or you just watch the credits, at the beginning of the credits, Soundwave comes out, and he transforms into a boombox and plays the Transformers theme. Hmm. Um, so people assumed that there was some way to transform him into that boombox, and it never really worked. And Hasbro was kind of hush-hush about whether you could do that with this one. Um, but the fans are crazy. If there's any way to contort this thing into a boombox, we'll do it. Yeah. Well, and if they figure it out, then all the more reason I'll probably buy one. <laughs> all right. What else do we have? Um, Transformers Prime has a couple figures that are coming out later on the year. Now, unfortunately, like I said, I'm not a big really fan of Prime. It's not a bad show. Just not really my thing, but it is moving away from Transformers. So why do you hate Transformers? Say again? Why do you hate Transformers? Uh, because they killed my mom. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, she bought too many toys. Um, Dead End is coming out later on in the year, and he's a remold, a uh, repaint of Wheeljack, who actually is a pretty cool character and one of my favorite all-time characters. So I may have to get the prime Wheeljack just to keep my, my Jack Space going. Um, with the number of wheel jacks that I have. Um, Arachnid's coming out, and she's a brand new mold, and the one that, oddly enough, everyone seems to go crazy over is this kind of special ops Bumblebee, which is simply a black and yellow repaint of Bumblebee, but drove everyone crazy because he's got black on his chin, so they're calling, they're calling him Beard Bee or something like that. Huh. Um, we're really weird fans. We'll find the dumbest stuff to get interested in. Uh, but that's really the, the biggest stuff from Prime, is that they're just continuing to make toys for it. Yeah, well, and the series has gone over really well. I know that it's gotten a lot of fans. Yeah, I watch it. Uh, I know Pixel Dan watches it. Scotty Cash watches it. So people who have been accused of being non-Transformers fans are watching this Transformers show. So I think that says that it's doing all right uh, getting out there in front of other people. I love it. It's not a bad show. And every once in a while I get interested in it. But I, I think what kind of killed it was um, I was told about the, the season one ending. Um, and thought it was a really cool idea. Unicron, holy crap, I'm going to watch this. Episode 1 of the, the ending had me pulled in. Episode 2 had me on the edge of my seat. And then to see Unicron look kind of like the poop monster from um, uh, Dogma kind of killed it. <laughs> and I, I had to put my computer away and, and walk off from it. Um, like I said, it's not a bad show. And it has brought a lot of new fans in and fans who were kind of alienated by those movies that shall not be named. Um, but it's, it's just, unfortunately, it's just not for me. I'll wait for the next version. I really, am, I really was a huge fan of animated. That was my favorite um, show so far. All right, what else do we have coming out of BotCon? Anything else? Um, nothing really huge. Um, like I said, a couple of the third-party guys showed off some of their stuff. Mate Toys had their Giant Tear, which was a smaller version of, of Devastator. Um, and that, that really was kind of like the round out. 
Okay. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at Transformers. I know a lot of you guys make a lot of noise about it, so we're doing our best to cover it. And like I said, we had to have an expert here, Deca Prime here, dropping this info bomb on us so that we can cover it. Now, again, apologize for the audio. It, it did get a little scratchy and a little choppy there, but we're going to do our best to... Uh, you know, clean that up as well as we can. And, uh, you know, hey, we're, we're trying. We're reaching out for you guys. You guys said you wanted more Transformers, so here we got more Transformers. Don't forget, you want to leave us a voicemail message, you can call our 24-hour voicemail line. It's area code 217-953-4025. You can shoot me an email, dirt at popculturenetwork.com. And as always, come by the website, join the forums. You can talk to great people like Deca Prime here, discuss things like Transformers, Thundercats, He-Man, comic books, video games, TV shows, all kinds of great geeky stuff. So again, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.